on this episode of the Nationwide Real Estate Mastery Podcast. We sat down with Franco Perez to uncover exactly how to get started in mobile home park ownership. Welcome to the Nationwide Real Estate Mastery Podcast, where we provide actionable steps to help you get your first or next real estate deal. Now, during this episode, you'll discover exactly how mobile homes help allow the middle class and low income families have a stepping stone towards real estate ownership. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Sean Young, today's host, and I love all things real estate. Now, before I introduce you to our incredible guest speaker today, I want to make a request that if at any point during the show you like what you're hearing, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe to the show so that you never miss an episode. And make sure to take a look in the description as it's going to be packed with thousands of dollars in free resources. Now today, we have the privilege to learn from a man who has been extremely successful at helping folks understand the importance of mobile homes. Now prior to his career in real estate, he was a high school student. But all that changed when he realized the potential in middle homes and mobile home parks. In mobile homes and mobile home parks, excuse me. I would describe our next guest as someone who is passionate about helping others. I want to introduce you all to the one, the only, Franco Perez. Franco, thanks for being a guest on today's show, brother. (laughs) Thanks for having me, Sean. Appreciate it. Man, I am super excited to learn all about mobile home parks and the importance of it. But before we dive into that, can you tell the listeners about your background? You know, who, who are you? Where are you from? And how'd you get started? Yeah, uh, I guess I grew up as a kid in the Philippines. So we had an immigrant family move over here to California and um, and basically grew up in the San Jose area. So the Silicon Valley area. There was a there's an interesting thing that happened with my family, but my parents divorced, became in a situation where my mom wasn't working. uh, And it was just me, my mom and my younger sister. And right out right when I was 17, 18, I had to quit school and start working right away. And that's kind of how I got into the real estate world. Got it. Got it. Man, what an awesome story, brother. What an awesome story. So what was your first introduction to real estate? How how did you actually get get your taste in real estate? I think the first taste was really being at that lowest end of really paying rent. I still remember the days of the struggle when it was me, my mom, and my sister at the end of every single month being on the opposite end, being having to collect all my cash, even borrow money from friends and even my boss at the time, just so I can afford rent and be able to pay at the end of every month. Uh, Realizing, you know, why is it that, you know, I feel like our family is great people, we're good people. And why is it that we're in this situ- situation where, you know, we don't have opportunities to be able to build wealth, I could barely afford paying for housing alone. Uh, and then being on that side of things really is what helped me really understand the power of like the differences of ownership and renting and that sort of thing. So, um, but, and then from there, started becoming a real estate agent, did did pretty well doing regular real estate sales. I did a ton of door knocking, a ton of cold calling, all just through the drive of wanting to be able to survive, really. I think it's that pain that I went through that really helped motivate me to work from early mornings to late nights. And from that, grew to be a pretty good real estate agent, and then came back to to reflecting back to my roots, to where I came from. And I really didn't love the whole real estate industry. I felt like I was just helping a lot of people, a lot of very wealthy people become wealthier and and ignoring all the people that were in my shoes back when I was struggling, back when I was going through those pains. I wanted to find something that would help, you know, the regular working class people that were, that are, that really can't afford real estate and how do we help them be able to get a step ahead 
right? The teachers, the working class construction workers, waiters, all these people are then being ignored by all these real estate agents because they can't afford housing. Um, so focus on that a bit, did a bit of government work, realized the government isn't my place to be, and then stumbled across mobile homes. And, and ever since, I just loved mobile homes and loved what it could do. It's such an underutilized uh, asset class, and it helps It helps in a very great way for a lot of middle-class members to get out of the the rental rat race and then into their first piece of ownership. So that's kind of how I got started. Man, what a story. What a story. What a story. There are so many people right now that are, are listening to this podcast that are going to be able to relate. And um, guys, I, you're like I said, you're in for a treat today. So make sure you, you dig in, get your pen and pad, get ready to take some notes because Franco's going to lay it all out for us today. Now, be, before we dive into the, you know, exactly how to, to use mobile homes and, and how to help the middle and how, how are you helping middle class and, and lower income families? You know, Franco, you contribute a lot of your success to your ability to being resourceful. Why do you think this has played such a huge role in your success? I, I think when you come from, I think it comes back to when I grew up in a poor place in the Philippines. I think, you know, one is in the Philippines, you you don't have that much resources. You kind of learn as a child, like I have to build my, I remember the kids I grew up with, we were building our own toys and out of old recycled plastic bottles. And, and it was such an interesting life. And it was some of the happiest times of my life. And, and then I remember moving here. It's very interesting because you'll have a lot of people that come from wealth that uh, aren't doing much with it. And then you come from, you meet a lot of people that come from scarcity and can make so much out of very little. And and I think it's that whole mental shift of being resourceful and having that mentality is what really will allow you to make an impact in whatever it is you want to do. And and it's whether it's through material, whether it's through real estate, um, whether through through any form of business. And and I think building a business is a very difficult thing. And and it has multiple different elements, whether it's marketing, whether it's sales, whether it's execution. And if you don't have a lot of resources, it's so important to be able to do that on your own. And keep in mind, I didn't go through college. I didn't have any money in my bank account. And I had to seek my own funding from several different uh, several d- different people to be able, that I had to pitch to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I learned everything that I ever learned through online, through Google, through YouTube through podcasts and through audiobooks. That's where I got all my information. All the resources are really out there on the internet that we have access to. But if we choose not to use those resources, that's our fault, right? And it's time for us to kind of really take initiative and and, and take action on, on, you know, having all this information accessible to us. 100%. I agree 100%. Not only having the knowledge it's not just having the information it's app it's applying it. it's going out and, and failing your way forward um taking massive imperfect action like you said you, you didn't go to college and uh, you know and you, you know there's no one kind of holding your hand saying hey franco let me show you the ropes you know you had to go find and if someone did do that you had to go find them you had to go actually put yourself in position to make that happen so it, it's safe to say that your journey was not an easy one at the beginning is that safe to say yeah, absolutely. It was the, probably the hardest part of my life, to be honest. Guys, guys, are you hearing that? You you have to persevere. A lot of folks, you know, do get kind of caught up sometimes in the success stories that are on YouTube, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Use those for inspiration, 100%. But you have to be aware that it, it, it's, um, it was a challenge, I'm 100% sure, for most folks to get there. They didn't just overnight wake up and say, hey, I'm successful. Uh, and look at me, you know, that, that's not how it happens, guys. You, you have to put in the work. You have to dedicate yourself to growing as, as not only, an, uh, a, you know, a real estate professional, but as an individual. Um, you have to become better as a, a person and you will become better as a person the more that you do this. So, man, I, I'm loving this. Franco, let, let's go ahead and dive right into it. This show is, is talking about exactly how to do this stuff. So let's go into it. How, how does someone get started with the mobile homes 
in the mobile home parks? Yeah. Well, I guess, you know, the first is really, really the financial literacy part of it. Cause like during school, during high school, even a lot of pe my friends that went through college, we aren't really taught, you know, what is net worth? How do we build our net worth? How do we, what is an asset? How do we build assets and that sort of thing? Whereas on the opposite hand, you have a lot of wealthy families that that's all that they focus on, right? And unfortunately, our, our society kind of pushes like education and career. And that's the only thing that a lot of our a lot of our generation or or a lot of people are taught. But it's not just that, right? It's it's there's so much more to it. I I see so many people that are that haven't gone through education or a great career, but made the right real estate uh, decisions mm -hmm. and are now ahead of the people that are go that have made it through college, right? And and it's a balance of both. The first real the first thing is really awareness, and and the whole element of it is where is your money going? Where's the cash flow going? And and it really starts with relating what are you paying towards housing and how much of it is your are you keeping. <clears throat> so in our area, average rental for an apartment, a two bedroom apartment is like $3,000. These ratios are going to be different depending on your area, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but it's typically the same concept. But our area, average rent for a two bedroom is $3,000 a month. Average single family home to purchase is about $1.6 million. It's a big gap. And this is where that wealth gap is really spreading and the opportunity for the for the low income families and middle class is very, is getting harder and harder because it's a moving target. Home prices are going up, mm -hmm. rental rates are going up as well. How do I ever believe that I can ever own real estate if I'm paying so much towards rent? And I'm at the end of every year, at the end of five years, I end up with nothing at the end of it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if we look and compare somebody that shifts from spending that 3000 a month on rent and instead paying that 3000 a month on purchasing a mobile home for example you have one third of that that's still a lot rent so let's say $1000 but $2000 of that is going towards a mortgage that is an asset that you will own uh so basically that is paying down something that you own and at the end of the 5 year difference we're seeing a lot of people have a $90,000 delta, a difference of what they have in their pocket compared to if they were to continue renting during that five-year period, right? Now, mm -hmm. keep in mind, they didn't do any more work. All they did was really just shift their payment from renting instead to living in a mobile home. And by doing that, they were able to make more money, pay less taxes. They were able to have upside and appreciation. They were able to pay down a loan on something that they own. And these are things, these are these shifts and tweaks that wealthy people think about these automatic savings accounts, these automatic improvements in their financials that really help move the needle of what, what they're capable of. And this I wish is taught more in schools because I knew nothing about how this works. So, so for someone to go and purchase a mobile home, is it similar to, to them getting a, mo a mortgage for a, a regular home? Is the process Correct. similar? Okay. It's it's pretty similar. Yeah. So instead of 30-year mortgages, you'll typically see about 25-year mortgages. Okay. Um, but yes. You do go through the similar process. Yeah. So as an investor, what approach, if someone is out here and they're saying, hey, I want to I want to get into this, I want to do what Franco was doing. What what are the best steps? What's step number one that someone's going to take? I'd say a lot of, um, I'd say the first step is really understanding the model of how mobile homes work. What are the myths mm -hmm. that are behind um, mobile homes? Because mind you, the media, Hollywood, all of this really puts this bad, horrible stigma around mobile homes and what they are. And that sort of thing. You know, we have Breaking Bad. We have, you know, a ton of like Eminem. They, they make it seem like a very poverty situation. Mm -hmm. Whereas you'll actually come to find out a lot of these communities are in very, in very nice locations in, in nice areas. And they have a lot of potential. So the first thing is really taking the time for yourself to understand what these are. 
and how they work. Now, in every state and every area, it's a bit different um, how the rules and regulations work because these are to, these are usually zoned for low-income housing. So it's very difficult to come in um, and do investing stuff. But in the mobile home park, the park ownership business, that's where they were really seeing a lot of um, people getting into this market mm -hmm. because we have people that, are older that own that have owned these mobile home communities for several years and they've really just let it go and as far as whether it's because I, I know a lot of your followers do wholesaling and investing and stuff and finding these park owners and finding out what it's worth and how can you make improvements to that as well so one thing that we do is we help um we help uh, we help uh, purchasers analyze what that mobile home park is worth, mm -hmm. and then what we can do to improve the value of that, the future value of that, if we were to replace a lot of the old homes for new homes, or if we were to improve the clubhouse and amenities in these parks. Mm -hmm. So that way that there's opportunities for investors to be able to purchase in, right? Got it. So we're seeing a lot of people that are that are doing that and getting connected with these park owners. Man, I, I love it. That sounds like a, a great, great opportunity. All right. So now we've identified the opportunity. We've we've kind of we found, an, you know, someone who's willing to part ways with their old mobile home park. How does someone go out there and get funding for this? For a mobile home park? Yeah. Are, are they are they getting funding yeah. for the entire so, park? Are they getting funding with the anticipation of rehabbing? How does that work? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it all depends on where you're at in the game and, and commercial lending is usually the most common. Okay. Um, and if, I guess it's my advice and, and of course, everyone's situation is going to be a different, but it's my advice to the way I like to do things and the way I like to learn is learn through somebody that's done it before. So, you know, JVing, half a deal or whatever the ratio it is that that you can work out with somebody that's done this before that has access to capital that knows the infrastructure of building out these parks that usually makes a big difference because there's a lot of things that you might not know about each park and each area mm -hmm. and having someone that's done it before on your first one or two deals is so important um you know there's a lot that can go wrong unfortunately and we can avoid that especially if it's your first few projects. Makes sense. Makes sense. So are you out here helping folks with this right now? Or do you teach people how to, how to get into mobile home ownership of the mobile yeah. home park ownership? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On both ends. Okay. Yeah. So both on the consumer end for people that want to get into owning. And then also we're doing a lot of consulting for the situation for park owners. Um, if a park owner is looking to, to raise the value of their park, or if someone's looking to purchase a mobile home park, we allow, we help with that too. Awesome. Awesome. Guys, as a reminder, if at any point during the show, you like what you're hearing, make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the show so that you never miss an episode. It's your engagement that keeps us doing this for the community for absolutely free. So Franco, I mean, what does your organization look like today? Is it just you or do you have a l large team? Um, we have, I have a team and also a lot of, um, business partners as well. Okay. Uh, uh, we have about 11 agents that we work with on our team. And then we also have a staff of about 13. Um, and that's kind of what our team looks like right now. Do you guys use virtual assistants at all? We do also use virtual assistants actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Great. All right, man. Um, man, we've come to the part of the show that I like to call the rapid fire session. Now, this is where I'm going to ask you a question and you're just going to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. OK, so, sounds dangerous. Yeah, it, it can be. It's a little <laughs> bit dangerous, a little bit dangerous. So get ready, get ready. All right. On a scale of one to ten, how strict are your parents? Two. Get up early or stay up late? Get up early. How many hours of sleep do you get? About seven. Favorite or last book read? The, it's called The Ultimate Guide to Business Process Management. Okay. 
if you could be any superhero, who would it be? Hmm. I'd say Iron Man. Okay. Something everyone should do less of. Stress. Something that everyone should do more of. Be patient. AI technology, scary or the way of the future? No matter what, it's the way of the future. Um, but we got to make, we got to be resourceful about it and how we use it. 100%, 100% agreed. Franco, let me ask you, brother, what do you think life would be like if you would have never found real estate? You would have never found, you know, the mobile home industry and, you know, you had went the typical route of getting a nine to five. How do you think life would be right now? Oh, man. You know, I I, I couldn't be happier. And, and I think part of it, I, I I never in my life wanted to be an average person. I've always wanted, I've always known that I wanted to create an impact in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. And I honestly didn't feel like I was doing that on a regular basis, being a regular real estate agent. Mm -hmm. But now with what I'm doing, I still tear up today when I see an immigrant family or a family that was never, that felt like they were never going to be able to afford anything. Mm -hmm. And they have tears of joy when they finally close on their first home that they own. And, and that fills me up so much and it drives me to just want to work more and help more people. And that's honestly the energy that, that helps me be so grateful for my life to be able to make an impact of directly to families like this. And I think more people should focus more about helping others sometimes more, a little more than sometimes making that dollar. Uh, I'm sorry. I think people should focus more on finding ways to be able to help people mm -hmm. a little more than, you know, than making money sometimes, because that might be that biggest fulfillment that makes you happy. And for me, I feel like that's really what makes me who I am. And, and that's really what drives me to want to do more. Man, I could not agree. I could not agree more. I, I love that mentality. Like you say, you want to help folks who are not in the best position that they could be in or folks who are striving to be in better positions and you're in a position to make a difference. Listen, I own and operate a virtual assistant company that is based out of the Philippines. And um, I, I just like you said, brother, I am 100% filled up with joy because I know for sure that we pay very well and uh, we impact the, the lives of, of our employees there. So, man, that, that like you say, it touches my heart, man. It touches my heart to know, you know, that we're actually making a difference. So what you're doing, what you just oh. said, literally like, gave me chills. I'm like, man, this is a good man. It's a good man. Oh, totally. And and I'm sure you feel that, that same way. And you can feel it in the tone of their voice when you talk to them. You know, they're like, they're so grateful for the, that you're able to create that job opportunity for them, yes. which not only affects that person directly, but their families as well, their kids, their their opportunity to own in their, in that country. Right? Wow. It's such a trickle effect, guys. It is such a tr trickle effect. And it's such a blessing to be able to help those who who can who are in less fortunate positions. Absolutely. Well, Franco, man, any final thoughts that you want to leave with our audience and listeners out there before you get out of here today? I think it's just that I, I, I hope that, you know, I, I think my biggest thing is kind of building awareness around how mobile homes are really a valuable thing for areas. And the other is, is hopefully it inspires people to, to build businesses on the purpose of making an impact. I, I think that's what I'd love to put out there. Awesome. Awesome. Brother, how can people reach you and get a hold of you to get more information and to get some of your great coaching? Ah, yeah. All of our links are on www.franco.tv, like television. So, yep. And you can Google us at Franco Mobile Homes as well. Guys, go out there, www.franco.tv. That's F R A N C O.tv. Go out there, connect with this guy. He is awesome. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this interview today. Franco, I want to thank you so much for coming out and sharing so much valuable information with our audience, brother. Dude, thanks a lot, Sean. Really appreciate what you're doing, too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And to our listeners, you all have made it to the end of the show. So give yourselves a pat on the back because most people never finish what they start and you just did. Now, if you got any value out of today's show, please share this with a friend or on your Facebook page like the video, 
subscribe to our channel, and send us topics that you want to learn more about. So until the next episode, you can catch me on any one of my social media platforms. I'll see you guys all on the other side. With this crown on my head, I'm seated on the throne. The top is so alone. Only thing that keeps me gone is I know my city love me.